Good afternoon and welcome. Really glad to have you here. I'm John Sal, the Director of Music Ministries here at Abington Presbyterian Church, and it is really a treat to be together today. Uh, in this, our 50th anniversary season of these concerts, uh, connecting our congregation's uh, centering love and care and appreciation for music with a wider sense of our community, it has been uh, challenging through the pandemic, but also really rewarding to see all of the ways that you have shown up to be with one another, to take in uh, these programs as part of the arts in your own life, and also to support these artists. And we're really excited to be able to continue to do that. Uh, in the cover of the program, you'll see that we have in place right now from our pandemic team here in the congregation, uh, a group that meets each week to review what uh, we feel comfortable being able to do to be sure that we are a source of both health and also hospitality. Um, we ask you to remain masked through this program. Thank you for uh, seating that allows those that have differing levels of comfort with how close you are to have some space around them. That helps us as well to continue to offer these programs. I'm sure with new guidelines, we'll be reviewing what that looks like in the months going forward, but we're really pleased to have you here in person and we are also glad that through this whole season, the committee has uh, committed to offering our programs online by live stream so that others can continue to make music part of their experience here in our community. Uh, I would point you to the back page of our program to see uh, all of this 50th anniversary season offerings. One of those was a January program, uh, an organ recital that we did move while we were temporarily on a pause here at APC. And so that's a, a program that if you're a faithful uh, Music at Abington follower, you might have passed that date or seen that it was uh, postponed at the time. I want to be sure that you see that's been moved to April when our own Eric Meyer, the organist here, will offer uh, a solo recital. Other than that, you'll see immediately upcoming uh, the Abington Symphony Orchestra concert in March next month, and then our annual memorial concert where the choir is preparing the foray requiem for the beginning of April. We look forward to all of those and to having you back here and to bring others with you for each of those offerings. All of the programs that we present here are supported through the free will donations of our season patrons and those who attend the concerts. Uh, it's one of our commitments that we continue to have barrier-free access of all kind to these programs. If you are not already uh, a patron supporter of the concert series and you want to make a donation today, we are going to keep the program a little shorter by no intermission and no offering during the concert itself, but there will be uh, offering plates at the doorways and on your way out you can make a cash donation there or write a check to Music at Abington. If you are joining us online and you want to be part of helping to support this series, you can also go uh, to the website for Music at Abington. It's also listed in the uh, comments for this video where you can make a donation that would support uh, this series for uh, coming seasons as well. Uh, finally, I'll just say a, a word about today. It's been a while since we've done these kind of in-person events. We don't have a formal reception at the end of the program. Uh, but at the end of the concert, uh, if you'll mind a little, some social distancing and keep masked, you'd be welcome not only to greet one another here or outside on this really beautiful sunny day, but also to greet our artists uh, and performers. We're really thrilled to have the Lyra Ensemble here for the first time today, including a member of this congregation, Anna Meyer, uh, and one of her colleagues from that group, I'll try to say her name right, Kristen uh, Bakioki-Stewart and uh, you're in for a wonderful, uh, a wonderful musical event. I'd like to invite my colleague, the Reverend Dr. Kirby Lawrence Hill, to come uh, here to the podium to offer an invocation for the day, and then we'll welcome our artists with applause. Let me add my word of welcome to you, uh, in addition to what John offered, and I invite you to join with me in prayer. No explosions or sounds of war here, O oh Lord, but we are mindful of those currently under attack, and yet we celebrate the light, creative, beautiful sounds that remind us of your gifts that build up and enrich. We relish the sense of peace 
and ask that the blessings of your gifts of peace might be experienced by all of your children, O Lord. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here today. One of the fun things for us uh, in playing for an audience is helping you to get inside of music to where we are. So the first piece we just performed for you was an invention that was intended for one player with two hands. But it's so much more fun to play with a friend, so we split it up uh, two players and four hands. <laughs> um, the next two pieces we're going to play are actually um, quite well to follow this one, because the first piece was all about imitation. Um, the next piece is all about everything is the same. So it's a canonic sonata, and the way this is created is actually pretty mind-blowing. It's one line of music that uh, Kristen will start, and then I will um, come in a few bars later and play the exact same line. So this is kind of like row, row, row your boat, which is very simple, right? But this one is an entire piece, three movements, of one long round. Uh, we call it a cannon. And the neat thing about this, get ready for your brains to explode, is that at any given time, one moment in the music has to have three functions. First one is it has to sound good as um, a melody by itself, right? It has to be like one sentence, one complete thought. Then it has to sound good with the other part underneath it at that time. It also has to sound good at that time with the part on top of it two seconds later, right? Is your brain exploded? Yes. So this piece by Telemann is one of, uh, one of those. And Kristen actually is playing off of the, the part where it's just one line. So she's just reading one line of music. 
um, which is also mind-blowing. If you'd like to come up and see the score later, I do have the score part with both parts. You're welcome to do so, and we'd be happy to explain it to you. The second piece after that is the Hindemith Canonic Sonata, also in this same idea, but very much later. Hindemith was a 20th century composer, and so he takes this idea of canon and plays around with it. It's not as strict as Telemann, but just as fun. So we hope you enjoy these next two pieces.
The next piece we're going to play is by a friend of ours, Danny Dorf, who is a Philadelphia-based composer. Um, the story about this piece is that he has two friends called Cindy, and both of these friends approached him one day and said, wouldn't it be fun if you wrote a folk song suite using the tune Cindy? And he said, oh, okay. So he did. So this particular um, collection includes several folk songs, not just Cindy, uh, dedicated to four of his friends, O oh, Susanna, Red River Valley, Shenandoah, and Cindy. So there's a little bit of heel kicking up in this one. If you feel so inclined to giggle, that would be okay.
Thank you so much for being here. It's wonderful to play for a live audience. We can't tell you how much it means to us. Um, our next piece is by a composer named Robert Muczynski. And Muczynski was very much like Hindemith in that he really focused very, very close attention to details in terms of dynamics, articulation. Um, whereas other composers like Bach or Telemann, it's kind of interchangeable. Um, whatever instrument you're playing, whatever the dynamics are, it can change. But he was very, very specific in his writing. Um, this piece that we're going to play for you are the duos for two flutes. And he also transcribed them for flute and clarinet, um, which is also a very beautiful um, combination of sounds. So um, this one is in six movements, so we hope you enjoy Muczynski's six duos.
A little bit of heavy metal in there. We thought we'd add that in on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> and now for something completely different. Um, our next piece is an arrangement of the flute quartet by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Um, Mozart wrote four flute quartets, which is actually for flute and three string instruments. So flute, uh, violin, viola, and cello. And um, I've heard a flute quartet arrangement of this, but this is the very first time that I've ever played a duo version of this. So Anna found this version during quarantine when she was finding different things to play. <laughs> and she said, why don't we play the Mozart? And I said, well, yeah, why don't we do that? So um, Mozart was notorious for not really liking the flute, but I, I tend to beg to differ. He must have loved the instrument because he wrote some really beautiful melodies for our instrument. Um, I think what happened in those days, the flute was going through a transformation. You know, we were going from the, the side-blown Baroque flute, which was made out of wood, um, and transitioning into kind of like the mechanics of the flute as we know it today. So everybody had a different flute to play, and you know, nobody really knew how to write for the flute in those times. So I, I tend to think that's maybe the reason why there's that rumor going around that he didn't like the flute. But um, so this is the flute quartet in D major, arranged for two flutes.
takes a lot of air to be three people. <laughs> Excuse me. So the last piece we're going to play for you is just a piece that flute players love to play together. And that's how it got on this program, because it's so much fun. Kristen and I both have histories with this piece as young flute players, playing with our teachers, playing with our friends. Um, we have asked Eric to join us today, so thank you to Eric for providing that for us. This is just a lovely, wonderful piece that we'd love to send you off with, so we hope you enjoy.
So I thought in light of the recent events of this week, we'd like to play something to leave you um, on a peaceful note so that when you leave, we're all thinking about a peaceful world. This is the flower duet from Lakme. <laughs> 